Hey y'all, welcome to Truman Day 2017. We're so excited for our wonderful program tonight. We're so excited to have so many new faces in our crowd and be welcoming a new generation of Democrats. What is the future of the Democratic Party? I think the future is really bright. I think people are really engaged. I, I think we're having some growing pains and there's going to be um, some challenges. But I think with the amount of engagement that we have, we're going to be okay. I got um, six high schoolers here tonight oh, and, wow. and two eighth graders because I just think bringing more and more young people in is going to help our cause. and. You know, we need to unite um, and get some good messaging out, and I think we're going to be fine. Uh, the future of the Democratic Party is really being set by the people of Tennessee. We've got so many folks coming to join us and join our county parties, get involved, get active with the issues that they care about, like health care and good education for everyone. So we see a really dynamic and growing party right now. Um, ready to take back elected offices and help make sure that things are good for everyone here in Tennessee. All right, well, thank you so much for your time, Maria. Have a great time at the party tonight. And uh, so there you have it. Well, I think the future of the De Democratic Party is uh, grassroots, uh, collabor collaboration, uh, really uh, focusing on organic community engagement. Um, I think that is really the future of the party. Um, and then uh, the, the last thing I would say is collaboration and just being be more collaborative, more um, working through partnerships and making sure that we take advantage of all the talent that, that exists within a party to leverage the party uh, for the future. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, I don't know exactly, but I'll tell you what, it's bright. There are Democrats that are getting active everywhere. I think you've seen it in Knox County. I've been all over East Tennessee, and I can tell you that there's county parties where normally haven't been as active that are having 30, 40, and 50 people come to meetings. We're getting candidates across the state. Uh, so simple. the simple answer is it's bright. All right, great. Thank you so much. I think it's nothing but positive. I think there's a lot of, uh, there's really a groundswell of positive uh, energy out there from a grassroots organization all the way up to the old party standards out there that are, that are enthused and, and seeing a lot of positive things going out. Um, I, I, see a, I see a switch um, at the state level across the board right now. I think we've picked up 12 seats in the last six months. Um, and we've got a lot to go. I think we're, we're you know, they've, they've taken 900 from us, but we've gotten 12 and I think the tide is changing. So I think that over the next year to three year cycle, I think we're going to see a lot of new governorships taking, taken over by Democrats, a lot of state houses switching to Democrats, and hopefully uh, at the end of next uh, November, we'll see uh, the U.S. House and Senate switch. Right. Well, we can only hope, right, Brian? Right, right. All right, well, thank you so much. Well, I think the future of the Democratic Party is what you see in local elections now. You know, uh, I was at a group last night, and we were talking about, you know, how much impact local elected officials have on us, uh, on our everyday lives. And so in an in a effort to, you know, re-energize uh, uh, politics, we need to see more folks step up and run in local elections and get to know folks and, and get out there and spread the message. So that that's sounds, what I'd say. That sounds great, Andrew. Thank you so much. I think the Democratic Party's future is one of expansive inclusiveness. I think it's going to be the party where conscientious, compassionate, caring people come together to actually progress the country, progress their states, progress their cities. I think Knoxville's made a great start. I love our mayor. And I think we have a chance now with all the energy. I mean, if you look at the crowd just tonight and think about all the people who've been energized, like me, um, we got a chance to change things. So I think of it as a time of change. Well, thank you so much, Caroline. The Democratic Party in Tennessee has a very bright future ahead. Over these past several months, I've been traveling the state and speaking with people, making a lot of phone calls, and there is so much energy and enthusiasm. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. A 
I think you're going to see a tsunami of change. I think that beginning with this election that's coming up, over the next four years, you are going to see great change in this country. You're going to see so many women that you've never seen run. And we're going to take this party back where it used to be, to a greater level. And we're going to get things done in this country the way they need to be done. Oh, I hope you're right, Vivian. Thank you so much. You so much. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. We have a history of being a grassroots party, and we are really resistant to power politics because we have uh, we're we're populist by nature. We just sort of hunker down and wait for the winds of uh, the more uh, ability. To, we maintain an ability to. Uh, speak truth to power and that is a uh, uh, that's in terms of the future here it's a challenge because we are in the minority number numbers wise but we often proclaim the fact that our that we believe uh, we certainly believe in uh, <coughs> uh, quality more so than quantity so things have a way of working out well thank you so much Mayor Tyree. We need everything we do to get the word out about James Mackler. He's an amazing candidate, and now you get to hear that from him. Our next U.S. Senator, James Mackler. Thank you so much, Gloria. That was uh, more than I deserved. I really appreciate it so very much. And I've been so eager to get up and speak with y'all because I've had a chance to get to most of the tables here. And the amount of energy and excitement in this room uh, is just so meaningful to me. And it's the same kind of energy and excitement that I've experienced all across this state as I've been running this campaign, which has gone on now for uh, five months, although it seems like in some ways much, much longer, and, and in other ways it feels like I just started. But there's nothing I would rather be doing now because of experiences like this, because of y'all. And that's because you all share my belief that our elected officials should care for the people who send them to Washington. Uh, please, go ahead. <laughs> You're, we've got a long campaign ahead of us, and y'all are going to learn a lot about me over the course of that campaign. But if there's one thing that I want you to take home tonight, it's to know this, that I believe in service. I believe in the value of service. I paid my student loans with combat pay in Iraq. As, as some of y'all... I was practicing law on September 11, 2001, and as a result of the attacks of 9-11, I left my law practice, I walked into an army recruiting station, and I volunteered. I had to do more. I, I, was, I was told by that young sergeant uh, that that was great, but if I wanted to be a pilot, which is what I wanted to do, I'd have to get an age waiver, because I was 30 at the time. So I got my waiver, I went off to Fort Sill, Oklahoma with a bunch of 19 year olds and found out why they thought 30 was old. <laughs> but it was the best experience I could have had. Like many of us, I had been in my bubble. Uh, but this got me out with people, with young people who had left their, their families and their homes in a time of war, who had defied all of the stereotypes of being selfish or lazy, and had put their lives on the line to defend our country. And it gave me the chance to work with people who had come from all walks of life, from all over the country, and to learn from them, and to work with them, to accomplish a common goal. Let me give you an example that has always stuck with me. My job was to fly Black Hawk helicopters for the 101st Airborne Division. Well, when you're on a combat mission in a helicopter, in a Black Hawk, it takes four people to fly that aircraft. Two pilots up front and two crew chiefs in the back. Not once did I ever wonder whether the person next to me was a Democrat or a Republican. I would never have questioned whether the people behind me were conservative or liberal. We had each other's backs. We had a mission to accomplish, and we should expect the exact same thing from our elected officials. But all too often, they choose to stay in their own bubbles. 
Those elected officials choose to put party ahead of people. They choose to put partisanship ahead of their country. Now, when we get to the point where elected officials can truly serve the people, then I hope we can start saying to them, as people say to me when I'm in my uniform, thank you for your service. Now I know we have some elected officials here who do meet that goal, and so every opportunity I get, and this is one of them I want to say to those people, thank you so much for your service. It does mean so very much to all of us here. But, but without, sadly, y'all are in the minority. And without substantial change, my wife and I worry for our family's future. We worry for your future and the future of your families. We have to change. We have to get to the point where politicians know what soldiers already know, that every mission, every goal is only accomplished when we work together. And the alternative is either gridlock or the tyranny of a gerrymandered majority. Yeah. I, I want to raise my children in a country governed by courage, not by fear. We want, to, we want to raise our children in a, in a country that celebrates the strength of unity and not the politics of division. And so every day I get on the phone and I'm calling folks to talk about the campaign. Many of them are Democrats who are just so excited to hear from a strong Democrat who's running for this office and they're supporting me 100%. But many others have never been involved in politics before. And they too see in me a candidate that they're ready to get involved for, that they're ready to support. And so many others have told me, you know, I always voted Republican, but I believe that you stand for accountability and integrity. And you're someone that I can support as well. Because those folks understand that I'm going to be a senator who represents the needs of all Tennesseans, who knows that I, who will work for the values that we all hold dear. That the United States should be a global leader on critically important issues. That access to affordable, high quality, comprehensive health care is a right to each and every American. <laughs> that a hard day's work should earn a living wage. and that each and every one of us should be free to live, love, speak, and pray as we choose. Every morning I get up and I'll read the paper or look at Twitter if, I, if I'm trying to punish myself for some reason, or, uh, you know, hear the news. And I know some people get discouraged, but I've got to say, every day, that energizes me. That lets me know that all of us are doing exactly what we need to do at exactly the right time. When we see those we call on to be our leaders manufacturing crisis after crisis, and those we call on to provide checks and balances failing entirely in that regard, we need more than Senator Corker's hollow words of timid disapproval. Whether it's Jeff Sessions rolling back the clock on criminal justice reform, or a single party drafting a health care bill in secret behind closed doors with no input from the American people, or existential threats to our country, both from without and from within, we need someone who knows that actions have to follow words. I know that. So, I hope that you all will be out talking about my campaign at every chance you get. And I hope that people are going to be saying to you, who is James Mackler? And so there's some things I want you to remember when people ask you, who is James Mackler? These are the things that, that I, how I define myself. First and foremost, I'm the father of two beautiful young children for whom I will do anything, and that's one of the main reasons I'm out here, is to make a better future for them. That I'm the husband of a woman who is a member of the clergy and therefore inspires me every single day as to what it truly means to serve a community. That I'm a patriot who knows that patriotism is more than blind obedience to authority. And that I am a man who knows that actions have to follow words. I left the practice of law after 9-11 because I had to do more, and I left my law firm 16 years later because, again, I had to do more. We are going to win this Senate campaign. We're going to win.
We are going to win races up and down the ballot. This 2018 is going to be our year because of this excitement and this energy and engagement. We can do it. We're going to do it together. I urge all of you to go to jamesmackler.com, sign up for the campaign, share the campaign with your friends, contribute to the campaign, and encourage all of your friends to do the same. We will win this, and we'll win it together. Thank you all so very much for being here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce our Democratic State Representative, Rick Staple. First of all, I realized I had done all that to camera set. So when I get back, I won't have my parking space. So as they find out, I brought $200,000 home. Um, First of all, let me say, Emily Gregg has done a fantastic job as a chair of the Knox County Democratic Party. Uh, I'm terribly proud of her and support her 110%. Uh, I'm very glad to have my friend here, uh, my brother, uh, Harold, the Harold Moses Love Jr. Uh, he's a friend and mentor of mine. And he and uh, uh, Leader Craig Fitzhugh are, are really huge supporters of mine and helped me have any success that I've had uh, this year. So really, in the, uh, between uh, Craig Fitzhugh and uh, and uh, Carl Dean, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to elect a, a Democratic governor this year if we really get out there and work and get the job. So let me do something preachers and politicians normally won't do. Let me be brief. Um, and looking at uh, today's climate, especially politically, um, we're reminded a lot of how people can come together uh, during tragedies. And currently we've dealt with uh, Hurricane Irma and uh, Hurricane Harvey and the devastation that Texas and Florida and parts of Georgia have received uh, is sadding us all. Uh, but a huge amount of support has come out uh, to, to those that, have, that are suffering through that devastation and suffered the loss. And it's good to see people kind of pouring in and, and doing support and, and showing up. But it's not so much during the hurricane that counts. It's really after the devastation when they needed the help the most. It's usually after the loss is when they really need support from people. And we've been dealing in America with Hurricane Donald since January. <laughs> and the devastation. The devastation that 45 has caused, we'll be trying to put this country back together uh, for a period of time. But the point I'm getting to is Democrats need to be inspired with 45 and his antics. Why would I say something ridiculous like that? Well, if you think about it, it's not ridiculous. It's actually the truth because Democrats historically have always showed up when people in this country needed them the most. Democrats were there early in our country's organization when working class men and women needed fair wages and fair pay. We were at the picket lines, taking abuse, getting hit with the sticks, getting losing our jobs, staying in the fight and not giving up and crossing the lines. Are we the ones that are still there fighting for a minimum wage to be raised so we can have a fair wage and fair living? It's the Democrats that are standing in that line. The Democrats were there when African Americans were fighting for their voting rights to be looked at as citizens of this country. When they looked to the left and they looked to the right, those that lost their lives with them were members of the Democratic Party. We are built for times like this. I know we're concerned about the dreamers and what should happen to them and what their future's looking like, but remember, we were the ones fighting for immigration years ago, and knowing that we needed that. Years ago, we also fought against pollution, and we warned that there was global warming, to some still who listen to Fox News deny that fact. <laughs> We are the group, we are the organization, we are the people that make the change and make the difference. You have to understand as part of being the Democratic Party's mission is that we stand for and with people. 
1988, it was a Monday, March 14th, my father came down the driveway while I was washing my car. He said, listen, boy, I'm getting ready to take you down here to see the county building and get ready to register to vote. And I said, okay, what do I vote when I vote? He says, well, I vote Democrat. And I said, well, Daddy, why are we Democrats? He said, no, I'm telling you, I'm a Democrat. He said, now, Democrats fight for people and they make sure you get a fair playing field and an even shot at what you do and we stand there for people. We're a true party of the people and of this country. He said, man, but you gotta decide for yourself what party you're gonna support. He said, we don't force it down your throat like other parties do. We let you make a true choice and a true decision. So since 1988, I've been a Democrat and I've been proud to do that. And I know what my job and my mission is, is to serve, protect, fight, and stand up for people who cannot fight and stand up for themselves. We are the ones that we hear the divide in America. to get things done when no other party can. You want to raise the debt ceiling? Democrats don't want to hate Democrats. Will you help me raise the debt ceiling? When you want to pass the budget in Tennessee, hey, the Democrat, Democrats don't matter, hey, Democrats. Will you help me pass my budget? I can't seem to get it done. When it came to the Improve Act for the state of Tennessee, listen, Democrats don't mark. Hey, Democrats, can you help me pass my Improve Act? Every time you got to get something done in the state, in this country, you have to come see us. So understand your power. Understand your depth. We can take over the Senate. We can win this seat with Mackey. We can win this seat with Horace or Williams. We can go against the Duncan tradition. We can flip the House back to Democrat in the state of Tennessee. We can get this done. This is not a pipe dream. It's not just rhetoric. We can get this done, but we have to stand together with no division. We have to understand the big picture. If we really want to get health care in Tennessee and across this country, if we really want to help the dreamers, let's start working together, let's drive, let's fight, let's support these great candidates that we have going, and let's stand up and let everybody know, especially here in East Tennessee, I'm a, I'm a Democrat, I stand proud, I'm a fighter, and you need us, and we'll get the job done. God bless you all. Thank you so much. University in 1990 and graduated in 1994. You graduated in four years, Harold? Okay. 
with a degree in economics and finance with a minor in political science, graduated from Vanderbilt University School of Divinity in 1998 with a master's degree in theological studies, currently pursuing a PhD in public administration at Tennessee State University. Um, while he was at Tennessee State University, he was in the uh, marched in a band, the Aristocrats of Band. He was initiated into the Omega Psi Phi fraternity. Uh, he was ordained an elder by the AME Church in 1999 and received his first pastoral assignment uh, from October 2002 to November of 2016. He is currently now the pastor of Lee Chapel, the historic uh, Lee Chapel. Uh, he stands at, as the uh, representative for House District 58, and uh, there's a host of things you can Google like I did. <laughs> her love. I'm going to tell you what her love is to me. Her love is my mentor. He's my brother. He is my friend. He is somebody I know I can count on. He represents his district well. He's a true Democrat and passionate about what is right. Uh, he keeps a stack of papers because if you ask him anything or try to debate him on anything, he knows what pack to go into, what paper to pull out, and tell you that your facts are wrong. <laughs> Her love is one of the only individuals I know on either side, uh, Democrat or Republican, that can decipher the state budget and probably can do a budget by himself. Uh, I know I can count on him. And I look to him to grow and establish himself and, and accept leadership that we've been trying to get him to have. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on this evening, you will be blessed to hear from my friend, a real Democrat, Representative Harold Moses Love Jr. Good evening. I'm certainly glad to be here. I was laughing at the person of the state because we actually came to the office one day uh, talking about something in the budget, and, and there was some discussion between uh, someone from the other party about when we actually passed. And I said, no, hold on, man. So let me get this stack back here. And I pulled out the paper. I was able to show him uh, that the Democrats were right about it, and, and the other side was not correct. Um, and so I'm glad to be here. Uh, let me thank the committee for the invitation. Uh, let me thank all of you for being here tonight. I won't belabor you uh, with much because we have had wonderful speakers to already set the tone for where we are right now. I did get a bit concerned because I was putting some finishing touches on my speech and Representative Staples came over there, the table, and then I noticed that he gave such a wonderful speech. Uh, I wonder if he would borrow some stuff from what I was, from what I was saying. Uh, but no, he's, he's done a wonderful job. Let me salute him for, for what he has done. Uh, your freshman year is always uh, a bit treacherous uh, because you're trying to figure out how to get your bills out. You're trying to figure out how to maneuver the process. Uh, and he's done a wonderful job with that, so let me salute him for that. He's done a great job. Thank you. And my former colleague, my classmate, uh, President Johnson, uh, did a wonderful job when she was in the legislature with me, so thank her for, uh, for her service here. Uh, to your party leadership, uh, you've done a great job getting everyone here. You've done a great job sustaining yourselves thus far. And so for that, I am eternally grateful for what the Knoxville Democrats and the surrounding counties are doing. It's Truman Day uh, in Knox County. As we look across our state and our country and our nation, one thing should be very clear to us, it does matter who leads. It does matter who leads. 
Oftentimes, when we enjoy moments of peace and prosperity, uh, we think that those moments will just last forever. Uh, we think that if we just keep on living, uh, everything will still be all right. Uh, there are some bumper stickers still around in Tennessee with the say, I miss Ned. Uh, some folks who, who enjoyed those years with Ned McWhirter's governor. Uh, and then we saw others come in and we realized that we did indeed miss Governor McWhirter. And we look around and we believe that common sense and decency will be in everyone's heart and mind, uh, but that's not the case. Uh, my mother reminded me as a young man that common sense is not common. And, and people have to work at being decent. It doesn't just happen. Uh, we have gathered here tonight, though, under the banner of the Knox County Democratic Party, not to bewail our current circumstances or to reflect on the glory days of the past. We have gathered to remind each other that there is a fight that needs to be fought, and the fight for justice will not be won if we sit on the sidelines. Or the fight for justice will not fight itself. Uh, the fight for justice needs people to engage the process. Uh, the fight for justice needs people to get in the ring and engage the other person from the other side. And so the fight for justice also won't be won just from our posts on social media. As good as it is to engage other folks from across the country and across the city and across uh, the world in our debates about what is right and wrong, the fight for justice won't be won via social media. The fight for justice has to be won on the ground with troops going back and forth to the election polls. The fight for justice has to be won with folks going back and forth from house to house, knocking on doors, putting pamphlets in people's hands. The fight for justice has to be won in fundraising efforts to make sure candidates can win. But I will pause for a moment because our current circumstance does need some commentary and our past does need some applause. President Truman was a good leader, wasn't he? Uh, you got a day name after him. He was a good leader, right? We got like the right Truman on here. All right. All right, so. We're going back up because Staples did let you know that I passed a Lee Chapel AME Church. Uh, there's a thing we have in some traditions called the call and response. All right, and that's, that's when I say something and you respond back, all right? All right, so we're going to go back to this line right here. Uh, President Truman was a good leader. All right. He was a good leader because of what he believed in. Because of what he believed in. Because of what he believed in. He didn't seek policies to alienate one group from another. He believed in global leadership and relationship, not isolationism. He believed in domestic diversity. Which is why he fought for civil rights. It's why he fought for including all nations in making our country safe. He was a good leader because of what he believed in. He understood that our best way to ensure our safety in this country was not to isolate ourselves from other nations, but rather to gather ourselves together so that we as a common bond could stamp out evil when it raises its ugly head anywhere in the world. He understood that we could not fight these battles by ourselves, and that's what makes a good leader. A good leader has compassion and isn't just concerned about commerce. Amen. A good leader, yeah. And a good leader does not talk out of both sides of their mouth.
We need good leaders. That's why we need good folk in here to run for school board, right? Right? That's why we need good folk in here to run for city council, right? Right? That's why we need good folk in here to run for state representative, right? Yeah. That's why we need good folk also to run for U.S. Congress, right? That's why we need good folk to run for U.S. City because this country, this city, this state needs good folk. It needs people who understand that it does matter who leads. But Truman is not with us anymore. But his spirit is still with us. His spirit is still with us because his spirit is with folk who believe like I do. But you gotta support public education, right? His spirit still lives on because he believes, like I do, and I know you believe also, that you gotta pay folks an equal wage, no matter what their sex is. Women who work just like men get paid, just like men get paid, right? He understood, and his spirit lives on to say that you gotta pay a living wage. Minimum wage is not enough, you gotta pay a living wage because things cost too much in our society. And he understood you cannot cast folks out just because the way that they got here wasn't the way that you got in this country. Some folks came by boat, other folks came by birth, but we all are here together. He understood that. <laughs> and his spirit lives on. And so I say to you, uh, we're gonna stand up. We're gonna stand up for public education and let his spirit live on. We're gonna stand up for equal pay for women who work just as hard as men because his spirit lives on. We're gonna stand up for, for the rights of those who can't fight for themselves because they're afraid when that knock comes on the door that maybe someone to deport them. We're gonna fight for them because his spirit lives on. We're gonna fight for everybody who is scared right now because his spirit lives on in places like Knox County. Amen. We will not go quietly into that good night. But instead, we're gonna fight because we understand America is great. It doesn't need to be made great again. Not at the expense of people. Not at the expense of children. Not at the expense of our seniors. We gotta fight because we need health care. We need public education. We need equal pay. We need living wage. And we understand. My country, tis of thee. Sweet land of liberty. To thee I see. We stand under that banner and know that we will fight until there's no more fight left in us. But we're gonna win this fight because we're on the side of right. We're on the side of justice. We're on the side of peace. We're on the side of love. And we will not go away. We want to keep arresting folks to vote. We're gonna keep taking folks to the polls. We're gonna keep contributing because we need good people in good places to make the right decision. And so I bid you good night, but I also bid you not good luck. But blessings and peace. Yes, yes. And we're going to win this fight. God bless you, my friend. Whether through his pastoral service, his work with the Knox County Democratic Party, the Knoxville Interdenominational Christian Ministerial Alliance, the NAACP, the Knoxville Area Urban League, the Children's Defense Fund, and a host of other organizations, efforts, and causes, what is clear is that Reverend Middlebrook loves people, he loves justice, 
and he loves freedom enough to commit his entire self to ensuring that none exists without the other. He is a noble warrior. He is a freedom fighter. He is an organizer. He is a foot soldier. He is a man. He has committed a lifetime to working for us, and for that, we are better and we are grateful. so that our unborn children will know that there is a nation, yes. a nation who will show this world that we can walk together. Amen. And so I say to you Democrats in this room, walk together children. Yes. Yes. Don't you get weary. Walk together. Walk together children. Don't you get weary. Because a great family is a promise. So we're here with Renee Hoyas, and Renee, we just finished up a, a night at the Truman Day dinner. Tell me what you thought. Oh, I am so inspired by absolutely every word that was uttered from that microphone. It was amazing. Which speaker really stood out to you? Well, they all stood out to me in so many different ways. Certainly, Reverend Middle Middlebrooks getting the Lifetime Achievement Award, that was amazing. I mean, there are... There are so few of our old heroes left, you know, so it's great to see them and honor them while they're still with us. Um, I thought Representative Staples was really inspiring about, you know, why you vote and why we're Democrats. And of course, Representative Loves, you know, talk about how, you know, we are, we are right. We are the party. And to keep fighting that fight. I mean, all of it, all of it was really inspiring. Well, so you're running. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about your campaign and some of the issues that are important to you. Well, right now I'm running for Congress, the second congressional district, as a Democrat. Woo! Um, and I am interested in, of course, the environment. Everyone expects me to be interested in the environment, and that's kind of an easy sell. But I also have a lot of interest in health care. I was the founding board member of the Community Health Alliance. It was our nonprofit cooperative insurance company. And I watched it rise with the ACA and fall with the lack of funding. Thank you, Republican Party. Um, I'm also really interested in education, and I'm very concerned about the state of public education in this country. Education, and our public education system is a pillar of democracy, and we really need to fight hard to maintain it public and not quasi-private, which is what charter schools and the voucher program is going to do. I mean, these are just really money-making ventures, and it's very disturbing to me to see that we could lose our public education. You know, as well, the economy, we've got a lot of issues coming up with taxes, and how are we going to redo the tax code? The tax code needs to be reformed, but corporate tax cuts are not going to provide jobs for workers. They're just not going to do it. There's no time in history where that's ever happened, and I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen coming up. So there's a lot of things on my plate. I'm learning a lot of really new things, and I'm really excited to be running. So what stuck out to you the most about this evening? Well, one, let me just say, I think it was the best Truman Day dinner I've ever attended, and I have been to dozens of them. I mean, literally dozens, and I think this is the best. And one of the reasons it was the best was the award given at the end to Reverend Harold Middlebrook. Those of us who've been in Knoxville a while, who've been involved in the civil rights struggle, 
as I have been for, well, really since 1964, know what a role he played and what a, what a leader he was and what a soldier he was. He's a remarkable American. And he made us, all of us, think once again what it meant to be an American and how we've got to recapture that. And by the end of his remarks, he was crying, his daughter was crying, Emily, very moving. Emily Gray, who was the chair, she was crying. And the reason they were was because what he said was so true. And it is so needed. And he just absolutely captivated the room. And the award was so merited that it's, uh, it, he does us all honor this evening. That's what I remember. Hi, we're here with Harry Tyndall, and uh, so Harry, I'm just interested to know what everybody's uh, feeling after such a wonderful night. What stuck out the most to you? Well, you know, to me it was two things, I have to say. It was the two Heralds. Uh, you know, Harold Love Jr. came up here from Nashville. I, I, when I went to Nashville, his father was the chairman of the committee that I served on, the state and local committee, so I knew him really well. It was great to see Harold actually follow in his footsteps. But, of course, here from Knoxville, the, the story, you know, the room was, the, the event was stolen by Harold Middlebrook. Uh, he, uh, you know, is an icon, and uh, he's a leader in the community, and he made us all proud tonight. Oh, that's it was such a wonderful evening wasn't it so you're you're in the race uh, you were able to uh, that you were involved where they had to break the tie right. etc and uh, so you're the last man standing yep. well we all you know there are you know ten candidates on the ballot uh, you know five districts we all start with zero votes so uh, you know as I said I think in the news uh, after the events uh, you know you it's not often you get a second chance but you know I'm looking across town all of Knoxville asking for that second chance. I, I feel passionately about the issues, our community, how we can make it better, and I, I hope to, uh, to win the confidence of all the voters. So we're here with Joshua Williams, and uh, so you've got an active campaign going right now. We Mr. Do. Williams, why don't you tell us about that? It's a big campaign. We have lots of people on the ground. I've been speaking. I actually filed with the FEC in May. And I haven't had a week where I haven't had three and four events to speak to people, both in the party and the progressive groups, civic groups. It, it's just going like a house fire. It's been really exciting. Yeah, there's been many events for you around around town, so congratulations on that. So here we are at the Truman Day dinner, uh, and it's wrapping up. But I'm interested to know what you thought, uh, what inspired you about this evening? What an incredibly inspiring evening with the leadership and the turnout, my goodness. But I think what was particularly inspiring was the bookending of legacy and future. And so I've had the pleasure of meeting the Hardin, uh, Hardin Valley Academy high school students. They're a progressive club here. And the young Democrats from the University of Tennessee. And they are a house of fire as well. They are really excited. They're motivated. They're going to be boots on the ground when campaign time comes, when the elections are here. And then to have Dr. Reverend Harold Middlebrook, who brings with him such a rich history and legacy of devotion to the cause. Um, He's been a help in my campaign as well already, and he is just, he's a marvel. He's been a good friend of mine for well over 20 years, and I was so touched, and he was completely shocked by the award. He was breathless when I saw him afterwards. But, but to have Reverend Middlebrook and these young kids, you couldn't ask for more in a, set, in a setting like this. All right, I'm here with the Progressive Hawks, who were in attendance tonight at the Truman Day dinner at the foundry here and uh, so who do I have with me? Uh, Abby James. Ryan Hart. Simon Jolly. Sierra Janaski. All right so a fine group of people and this is just four of a, a big table of uh, students that that came out tonight to the Truman Day dinner so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, your group. So the Progressive Hawks are a group of about 20 students at Hardin Valley and we're taking action within our school and our community around progressive and democratic issues. Uh, in the coming month, in the coming weeks, we plan to have registered people to vote at Hardin Valley and also take action on some environmental issues. So how did you get started uh, in, in the group? What made you come into the group? Um, I've always wanted to become a part of something like this because I've always held these views and some of my friends I knew were in it so I decided to join and I'm really glad that I did. Well we're glad to have you guys here and so tell me something that inspired you guys tonight. 
um, <laughs> is something that was really inspiring was just to see the energy from everyone here and how passionate everyone is. Uh, a lot of times when we turn on the news, it can seem somewhat hopeless to an extent. Uh, to see all that kind of bad news, but to see everyone coming together here, rallying together to defend democratic values and equal rights and all those kind of things was just really inspiring. And so what inspired you about this evening? Um, I would kind of agree with that statement. I'd also say like just the message of unity and that we really need to come together like as a community and like stop dividing us and just come together to work the issues that matter to all of us. Well, I have to say, it's it's really refreshing to see you guys starting so young. And did you say that you are doing voter registration in the high schools? Are there other uh, high schools that are involved with the Democratic Party at this moment? Not that we know of in the Knox County, uh, in oh, you're the Knox County High Schools, but <laughs> we hope to you talk. You guys are the best ones, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right, well, and we wish you luck. How would we be able to uh, get in touch with you guys? Uh, we have a Twitter page. It's at Progressive Hawks on yeah, Twitter. Right. And, uh, yeah, we can reach out to the Knox County Democrats and all that. So. And do you have, like, a group song that you'd like to sing? I do not think so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thanks so much for uh, joining us tonight. And thank we it was really great to see you guys here tonight. Hi, we're with Gwen McKenzie, and she is one of the candidates for city council in District 6, correct? correct? Okay, so it's you and one other candidate. That is correct. Her name is Jennifer Montgomery, and we're actually making history because we have never had a female to sit in the seat before. Oh, well, congratulations. This is, a, this is a big thing. And, and you started with how many candidates? We actually started with 13 candidates, and so that actually made city of Knoxville history as well because we've never had 13 candidates run for any seat in the city or the county before. Well congratulations for for winning out of all that. That's that's pretty really amazing. So uh, tell me what issues are important to you. So important to me actually is economic development, economic revitalization uh, across the district and across the city. That's very important. Affordable housing is very important to me. Community policing and programs for youth and children. Okay. Well, so here we are at the Truman Day dinner, and it's wrapping up, but I'm interested to know what you thought was uh, a real standout moment tonight. Well, I'll tell you, the entire evening was just amazing. I've been to several of these dinners before, but tonight was just really more like a pep rally. It was so inspiring and trying to get everybody energized about the future of the Democratic Party and of our country. Uh, but I think the really big highlight for me was Reverend Middlebrook receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award and just hearing about his history and all the work and sacrifice that he's made that's just inspiring the party. And then how he wrapped it up with just saying that we still have, we're still in the struggle, we still have a lot of fight to do but standing together we can do it and so that was very inspiring to me yeah that was a very inspiring moment I am with Rebecca Parr and we've just wrapped up the Truman Day dinner what inspired you tonight I have to say that listening to um, Reverend Middlebrook was truly inspirational and being in the same room with somebody who is a pioneer for justice and for the causes that we all hold so dear and that we all care about so much and he's made such gains and moves with other great leaders and that was really inspirational and his daughter wrote a beautiful speech so yeah it was very was, moving that was very moving for sure so that was probably the most inspirational thing that happened tonight it actually brought me a little bit to tears to be hearing such greatness and knowing that um, we were in the space with somebody who cares so much and has been part of the movement for so long I have a lot of friends who are very involved in the movement for many years the old progressives um, and that work at Highlander education and research and I feel very strongly that the movement has to keep happening and we have to keep going with these efforts um, and this room being at this dinner gave me a lot of hope and belief that that this is a powerful thing and that it's not over yet well thank you for sharing that and we appreciate that now you're running for office you're running for city council in district one and what uh, what inspired you to join the race for city council? Well, the most inspirational thing that happened to me was in my lifetime, I never thought this would happen, but I got to the, take custody of my great nephew, and he's now five. Um, and I've had him since he was born. And in doing that, 
I got very involved with community endeavors and other families who are going through a lot of similar things as I am. I'm on the Board of Community Action Committee and I learned a lot about different families, the disparities and some of the issues that they're facing on the ground there and involved with the Policy Council of Head Start. And one of the main focuses that I care about in my campaign is the opioid crisis and the epidemic that we're facing here in our community. And I've gotten very involved in gathering around the table individuals who also care about that. And I've started a Next Step initiative which deals directly with intergenerational families who are going through a lot of the same causes of hardship because of the epidemic as well as violence that surrounds it and I'm looking at a different approach um, putting together through art and dance and movement and mindfulness engagement with the community so that we're giving alternatives to some of the lifestyle that they may know. Um, one of the things we know about the opioid epidemic is that it doesn't have a socioeconomic or a color. It, it, it affects everybody and we're losing a lot of lives and I feel strongly that we need to be engaged with our communities and do something differently. And of course all the other things that go with running for city council, one of the strongest things I feel is that we need to pay attention at this time in our history where there's a lot of momentum for development and we're not paying attention as closely as we need to to what does affordable housing look like for our community and as we move forward are we losing more and is the margin going to grow wider that we're going to have a larger homeless population and those issues are going to get greater so I think it's time right now that on City Council we need to pay attention to the prioritization of spending and figure out what is the priority everything can happen the momentum is still there it's wonderful I'm for development but are we prioritizing people before the parks and before businesses and those kind of things. So I'm with Lauren Ryder. She is running for District 4 uh, City Council. Correct, yes. So tell me what got you uh, interested in running for City Council, Lauren. Um, just been involved in my neighborhood and the area of North Knoxville for about 12 years now. And about 10 years ago, I got involved in some zoning issues in the area um, where kind of looking at some zoning changes for uh, that would have been a negative thing for low-income housing and I got involved that way and folks were like you should run for city council and I said that's the craziest thing I've ever heard why would I be a politician um, and so as time went on I just became more and more involved fighting for things in my neighborhood and stepping up for people um, at city council meetings county commission NPC meetings uh, BZA board of Be uh, better building board and so I've just kind of evolved and here we are 12 years later and it was the right time um, and I was ready for it and so um, I've just been working on issues and I'm ready to represent a larger number of people here in the city well um, I wish you luck in your campaign and uh, so I just wanted to ask you know we're here at Truman Day dinner we're wrapping up and uh, it was a really inspiring night what inspired you the most this evening um, it's really awesome to see the wonderful candidates that are stepping up to run for the Senate races um, and you know congressional seats that are coming up so I'm so excited to see those and I, I hope that all this energy is capitalized upon and people will go work for those candidates help fund their campaigns go knock on doors for them phone bank um, and get the vote out for them and um, so uh, listening to them speak and and the fact that they're willing being a candidate myself it takes a lot of energy and a lot uh, it just takes a lot out of you to be able to put yourself out like that and so I'm excited that they're doing it and I was excited to listen to them and I, I want to see people follow that momentum and work for these candidates